What's going on, YouTube? TargetBlood98 here. Coming at you guys with a follow-up video from the Nintendo Switch presentation about a week later with my good friend Nintendo Effect. Say what's up, aka Heaven Gabber Studios. Yo, what's going on, guys? Uh, like I said, we did a Nintendo Switch uh, live stream. Uh, it's been over a week. We have a lot to discuss. We're actually going to split this video into two parts because there's just so much things and we don't want to throw in an hour-long video. So I'm very excited. We got lots to talk about, so... Whenever you're ready, man, you can just start the first topic about our general thoughts. I'll throw it off to you. Just tell me what some of your thoughts, like how, how, what were your reactions right after we ended the call and just gradually what happened afterwards, like during the week? Well, during that week, I remember coming to school. I was talking to my friends about it. And I was like, man, I really want to get this in touch. But then it just had me stumped. I was like, how am I going to do it? And before I knew it, I waited about like two, three days. And the thing was already sold out worldwide. So let me, let me, let me. Yeah, let me jump in there, man. See, I got all my friends are like Nintendo haters, okay? And a lot of people that I thought they were liking Nintendo, they all moved to PC. Like, I'm like, damn, so I got nobody to talk to about it. Like, I legit had nobody to talk to about it. So that that bummed me out. And literally the day after um we filmed it, you know, I went to sleep and I woke up, I went to school. I'm literally in my 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 algebra my college algebra class and I'm in the like boring so the, the teacher's boring. So I'm in the, my phone, I'm looking through Twitter, because I go to Twitter a lot during school, that's how boring I am. And I'm seeing that GameStop and everything's sold out. So I'm like pissed as hell. I'm like, damn, this sucks. Cause you know, I'm trying to get a pre-order in, but it's sold out already. It's sad too because really and truly I was waiting for this thing. I was in that, that initial debating stage. I remember yeah. talking to my parents about it. I was like, you know what, this yeah. may look good. I remember I was talking to my girlfriend. She was like, you know what, you should give yeah, it a yeah. shot. And I was like, man, let's go and pre this thing right now. But I come yeah. to it and I'm like, dang it. And then, yeah. it, oh man, it's just so much so, I could have gotten. But, yeah, like right before the, the stream, like we started streaming, like I, I let my, my brother know because I told him like, hey, you know before you stop by work, can you stop by Target and just pick me up a pre-order? Just put it underneath my name so that I can go pick it up when it comes out. And after the Switch, like, launch, like, the, the Switch stream, like, I ended and I was about to go to sleep. I'm like, damn, 300 bucks. Because remember, at the t we'll talk about the price later on, but at the time, I'm, I was really, like, I was pissed at the price for, for some reason. And I, I know the reason why. I might do a separate video of my own just explaining all about that. But, um, like, long story short, like, um... I was pissed and I told my brother, you know what? Don't worry about going to Target in the morning. Just fine. Forget it. And then like, I, it's like, it's like, damn, like I go and I see like the, they get sold out and it's like, damn, like it really just switched my, my, my mind around. Like, damn, you know what? I should have got the pre-order because now it's sold out. It's like, it's such a good tactic, man. They, they lowered the supply and then the demand just skyrockets. Exactly. Just like, skyrockets. it's like, it's insane. It's, it, it pissed me off. So I was, I was like, I told my friends about that too the following day. I'm like, dude, like that pissed me off. But I wasn't like angry. I was just like, I was laughing because I'm like, oh, you know what? I, sh I should have known. You know what I mean? That's, that's on me. I should have known. But I mean, that, that just sucked. But, um, and about, uh, you go ahead. But, um, I agree. I know exactly what you mean because I remember sometime later. Now, GameStop did this, they're doing this thing where you can go and talk to them, and when they get any news about the Nintendo Switch, they're going to automatically email you. So I just wanted to throw it out yeah. there if you're interested. I happened yeah. to do that, like, Friday, some mm -hmm. around that time, and they were I, like, yeah, man, I got you, and they yeah. just put me on their list. I, I did the same thing. Uh, the thing is with pre-orders is that uh, with the pre-orders, like, people, I don't know why, but there's this thought that, and I think it's because the NES Classic, that, that's the reason why, because they literally, they understocked it like crazy, and, like, I heard that there was only, like, five or six units per GameStop, but the GameStop that I, that one's over here by my house, and everywhere around, like, I at least got, like, 35, from what I've seen, they've got either between, like, 30 to 40 units per store, and that's actually not bad at all, and I think, um, the GameStop went out and said publicly that they, um, they, their their pre-order allotment was 500,000 units and they they sold 500,000 pre-orders but it's weird but they sold like like 1.2 million software stuff so those are the games right so it's weird like you have to think like so everybody went in there and pre-ordered at least one or two games we all know everybody pre-orders so that's you know everybody yeah, did, like, that's you know? but it's weird because like their launch is so weird because i'm like did they really bought like it's so weird because the only good game is like maybe bomber ran but i'm th it's kind of curious you think about it like did they, they went in there and probably like pure in one two switch like <laughs> it's so weird to think like like they got zelda one two, one two switch but, but anyways it's weird because people are saying like oh nintendo like understocked it but 
it's not that because look, it's five hundred thousand just for GameStop, and I'm I'm you know Walmart, Target, they're not getting the same numbers, you know what I mean? Because it's not GameStop, but I'm assuming they each got around like maybe Walmart, Best Buy, Target, Amazon. They probably got either one to two hundred thousand. And Reggie, if he's made the president of Nintendo America, went out and said publicly that they um they're gonna sell, they have a uh, they're gonna ship out two million um units its first month, and that's the exact same as what Xbox um. Xbox One and PS4 uh, did like PS4 was sold out for like a couple of days straight. Like you couldn't get 24 one. Hours, yeah, was, you the chick could he get one? So, and that's the same situation was going on with the Nintendo Switch. So it's very curious that uh, a bunch of these Nintendo haters are saying like, oh, they understock it on purpose. You know, they're scumbags. They want to do that so the scalpers can do it. I believe that with the Nintendo the, the NES Classic, but honestly, I think that was just an experiment. They, they probably didn't even realize it was going to sell like that. You know what exactly. I mean? But with the Switch. They're selling the same numbers as a PS4 and Xbox One as they launch their launch month, and you got to think about it. Yeah, Nintendo was releasing it earlier in the month instead of like because usually a PS4 uh, was like late November, I think it was, but like people have more money to spend on November than they do in March. So yeah, cause you know what I mean. It's it a kind of season, yeah. exactly it's a holiday season, so it's very interesting to see how they're like. The sales, the sales numbers are, are very competitive with the PS4 and Xbox One. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Oh, well, I agree with all that. Now, the second thing we were talking about, as far as the um the Nintendo Switch goes, right? We touched yeah. on the uh, price. You know, I remember that was being one of the biggest things for the both. Yeah. It's just the price and how everything is. But um, yeah. let's get into the specs a little bit, right? Okay. Now, well, let me touch in the let me touch on the price real quick because I don't think I, I fully. Like I said, I might do a separate video reason why I was so, like, angry during the presentation. But I think I can just... Like, the way that I think I, I look at it now is, like, like I said, I, I told uh, Target Brothers before the, the calls that I went to go watch Etika's stream. And the dude's hyped up. He did a 24-hour stream. Like, I love that guy, like I said. um, But he got he got everybody hyped up. And he said something very interesting. Like, he said, like, he didn't want it to be 250 bucks. He wanted it to be 300 because if it's 250 then it probably has some weak hardware in it. You know what I mean? True. 300 is a pretty solid price. Like, again, you're not going to get... We're going to talk about this more in the specs side. You're not going to get PS4, like, level stuff. But uh, for you, 300 that's a pretty solid, like, price. Especially for, uh, for what it can do, you know? It's, like, quarter. It's, uh... It's, uh... It's a home console. It's more powerful than the Wii U. It's I from what from what we're hearing. Well, okay, again, we're talking about this. We'll talk about it in the specs. But anyways, like it's a home console, but you're also buying like a super beefy like handheld. Yeah. So it's, it's like you're a, getting two in one. Yeah. Basically, the sum what it, what it seems like. You know, it's just a glorified hybrid between the Wii U and the yeah. 3DS. If they had a baby, it's just like. Bad yeah, hair, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because with the Wii U, like the gamepad, you can't even like. I, it, everybody thinks that you can like, because like you know the joke is that you can take the gamepad to the toilet. I actually can. Like the the <laughs> signal gets lost. Like I don't. I, I'm gonna throw this out there. I think I said it during the Switch decision. I don't really like the Wii U, but I love the Wii U games on it. Like oh, everything yeah, the about the Wii fantastic. U. Like the gamepad is kind of stupid. They could have dropped it. Like I think they should have just dropped that. Like once like the first one year in they should have just dropped it and throw the pro controller in there and start like reworking like um recoding like games but they didn't do it which is kind of their fault i think they should have just dropped that they should have fixed its like interface like they should have dropped me verse they should have really fixed the um the online stuff which we'll talk about in the next video about the negative stuff about the switch but i think we've talked about a lot of the pricing i think we should just finally step into the specs because that's like where most of the internet debate is on so let me hear your thoughts about it real quick. Okay, so just touching bases with it, right? I heard a little mm -hmm. bit about the specs, and I'm kind of a sexy guy myself. This thing mm -hmm. has an Integra yes. One chip. That's it's rumor. We don't. Let me. We gotta. I think we gotta We gotta. We gotta put a disclaimer on. You know, these are all rumors. Like Nintendo or Nvidia has never came out and said exactly what it is, but we have a rough idea. We have a rough idea. So, so all right, it's continue, basically yes. the same processor. Inside of the NVIDIA chip. That's basically what it's yeah. rumored to have. And mm, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. It has two modes, right? You have your handheld mode and you have your home dock mode. Mm, basically okay. what the thing is, if it's docked into the station, the games in the console itself will run more, it will run better, basically. It, mm -hmm. it has, it's using more processor power. It's, it's Yeah, it's, it's allowing, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's allowing itself to overclock. And on the go, you know, you're going to have probably... Play. I don't know the exact resolution for um. It's Zelda. the I, I, screen. Oh um, 
I heard that okay, so on this actual screen itself for the Switch, it's only gonna be 720p, but for like Zelda, when you play it on the TV, it's gonna be up like I heard that it's gonna be 900 p but upscale to 1080p. Well, it, it that's good, all right, because yeah. you know, if it was 720. If yeah. it was 720 on the TV, I would have been a little concerning. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's. I understand, like with. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like if if you remember back in the day, like with Call of Duty Ghost and Advanced Warfare, they really they could not get 1080p on they that could. console. That thing they could not. And you gotta you gotta you gotta put this in like the, I think the Wii U can do Call of Duty Ghost because I have, I had Ghost and it did 1080p. That's, that was that's the weird part. But anyways, you have to think about it, like Zelda is such an open world and. and they gotta do draw distances and like you know pop in. So 900p for that big of a world, that's that's actually really really good. It's very good. I mean, especially yeah. for what you're getting. Like, you exactly. know, I mean, sure, it's not like you're gonna. Yeah, it's not you're gonna get like PC graphics out of it. Yeah. And you know that's yeah, of course not. This, but you're getting something good. You're getting you're getting something yeah. at least stronger than than this. Like you're gonna like you're gonna get some stronger than this thing. Like that that's the best part. And you get great like, games like this. Yeah, if you're like a super spec guy that wants the high-end quality, then there really is no market for you. Yeah, exactly. There's no market for you on consoles. You just go to PC. So that's why I, it's funny when all these like spec competitions on the console, like it's just retarded. Like if you really care so much about specs, then just go on to your PC. Like the PS4 Pro, it, it's a pretty terrible console. It's not, it's a minor upgrade. I think, I don't, I don't know if I did a video on it, but it's a minor, it's a, like, you're sure you're getting faster processing speed. They can upscale it to, to 4K, but it's not truly native 4K it's game. Not a native 4K. It doesn't, it doesn't even have a 4K Blu-ray drive. Like, come on. Like, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a big mess, but we're not really here to talk about the PS4. But, um, and about that leak you said about the X1, it's weird because I've been hearing there's this other rumor going around and it's, the rumor is about like a month old and, it's um apparently this guy this chinese guy he's over in china making he's actually manufacturing the parts and he basically leaked everything from the weight of the things he said that there's these two controllers that go in he said the spec like he said the screen is 720 he said all these things and back then you know it was just wishful thinking but now that they did the switch event a lot of it's uh a lot of it's leaks from that 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 rumor is becoming true and the very interesting thing is that um He's saying that it's uh it's not the X1. What they're saying it's uh so you know how like this architectures are the Maxwell and Pascal like I I I'm, I don't really know too much about it but like in layman's terms the Pascal is more is for like the X2 processor chips and the Maxwell architectures for the X1 chips. And the dude in China who's making them he's saying that they're using the Pascal architecture so by that, we're thought to believe that it's using the X2 Tegra chips. And with the X2, I think is uh, the chip they're using in the new Shield. That's like, that was just announced. And it can do 4K streaming. Now, I don't think the, they're going to um, do 4K. The portable one or the, uh, the actual physical home console? Because I think I know what you're um, they, they did have a reveal of the new one. It just came Yeah. Out. The one they they re they they announced it at the CES a couple of a couple of weeks ago. It was, uh, what is it called? I don't know. It was like the new shield. I, I forgot. Honestly, I can't. I don't know why. I can't think of the name off my top of my head. But um, it was using the X2. So from what what I'm trying to get is that it, this this leaker, this this who was in, in the in the factory making them, he's got a lot of stuff right, and that could possibly be right because we like I said, like if you go on Nintendo's website, all they have under spec, like the the processor, all it says is custom Nvidia Tegra chip. That's all it says. We don't know if it's an X2 or an X, uh, an X1. Is it using all these different? We we don't know, but what I think we do know is that it's pro. I, from what I heard is that they were doing some tests with um with like an X1 chip and supposedly it has like a faster processor speed than what it's on like the the PS4. Like I think it's like at two. I don't know. It's like it's a faster processor speed, but the only thing that it's is um it's lacking on is its GPU, like its graphics, which is understandable. You know what I mean? Like. It's, you're not gonna get great graphics on the Switch, and well, you're gonna get good graphics. You're gonna get great graphics when you're like for like Zelda and stuff. But I mean, if they're doing like same games, like um, like the one that thinks of like, let's say they port like Watch Dogs Two. Like I'm just picking the game out. You're not gonna get the same graphics like on the Switch. But what sure. I'm saying is that you're still gonna get pretty good graphics, pretty like um, I want to say respectable graphics for what you're getting. But it's a solid console, like from what I'm saying, and um. Do you want to add on before I continue? Because I'm like rambling. Oh, uh, 
as far as like specs wise go, like you said with the overclocking and stuff like that. Yeah. Just let's keep in mind this is just the beginning exactly. of the um generation. So they mm-hmm. haven't necessarily tapped into the full potential of the chip because you know keep in mind with the Xbox One they just did the exactly. Direct X12 thing. So they're gonna probably something yeah. like that for Nintendo. That's, so they're gonna add that's that. exactly because I remember you gotta keep like this is like this is like the whole debate. Like I remember um. Because there's they're this whole debate that the the Switch isn't, like, it has 4 gigs of RAM in there, and they're saying, like, it's not enough because the PS4 has 8 gigs, and, you know, it's not enough. But you got to keep in mind that, like, the, the, the RAM that's in the console doesn't really, uh, it doesn't equate it doesn't, to its performance. So like it just, and all that other stuff it, does. it does multitasking, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to think about this way, like, the, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 had um 512, yeah, like 512 yeah megabyte. something like megabytes of RAM. Of RAM. Okay, and they have some really solid looking games. So you, if you go back to early, early in the like 2007, like the games look really bad. Like I, the one that I can think about, like the sports games, like FIFA or the NBA, like 07, like the graphic. So if you compare FIFA like 7 to FIFA like 14, same console, there's a big graphical difference. It's the same hardware. That's because it takes time for developers and um, they, I guess, yeah, developers who like, like you said, to tap into the potential. So I think what we're going to see is just maybe some, we're going to get some good looking games right now, but I think in the future, we're going to start seeing some better looking games. Once developers start learning how to work around stuff and doing some tricks, like li- like they know how to do lighting effects and stuff like that. Eventually down the line, we're going to get better looking games. The game is going to be amazing. Yeah. Like Especially, especially how like, the yeah. Original, you know, Zelda, like, the Brother Wild yeah. is fantastic right now. Just Dude, you gotta awesome. you gotta consider that it's a Wii U. It was made for like it was made on Wii U hardware, and even for the Wii U, that's some impressive stuff for that's the Wii U. And um, and we also gotta remember that the Switch supports Unreal Engine Four. Like that's a very good looking uh engine. Like I remember there's videos all over YouTube like where they remake Ocarina of Time or Mario sixty four in the Unreal Engine Four, and they just look beautiful. They look great. That's and and just one game that I can think about is like, dude, Mario Odyssey. Like, the, okay, the sea, the sea looked kind of whack. I'm not going to lie. But like the forest and the, all the other worlds in that trailer, dude, the thing looked gorgeous. I and mean, that's like, a, that's a, a, that's year one title. And the game looks great. The Mario Odyssey looks great. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I guess in Xenoblade, Xenoblade 2 looked pretty good. It looked great, actually. That game looked very good. Um, I mean, it looked first one looked great on the Wii when they first did it. It looked fantastic. Yeah. So Especially just coming to Wii. like a Switch, it's great. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, another example of like the whole thing that developers will eventually tap in is like, like you can compare easily to um, Twilight Princess on Wii and Skyward Sword on Wii. Like they were both on the same like console, but um, Skyward Sword looks drastically better. Like it looks great for the Wii and it came out like what like five years later because develop the uh, nintendo started figuring out how they can really like utilize what's in the, the hardware now well, you, do you want to add on before i continue or um now i did also hear that the nintendo switch will actually have 32 gigabytes of space of stock yes. that's just okay there's a 32 i ah uh, you know what dude the, okay i had a video about like me talking about it like it's recorded and edited on my computer but i've never uploaded it and I don't really know why I didn't. Honestly, I think I forgot it because I uploaded the Keemstar video. And then I just totally forgot about the, the, the video because I was talking about the storage. So I think we'll just... I might scrap that video. We'll just talk about the storage right now. So do you want to add anything before I start talking about storage? Okay, so the first bit I heard about the storage is you can upgrade the storage to the any maximum amount of SD cards they have out there. Right? Yeah. Now, I don't know micro SD, just, yes. Well, yeah, micro SD. That, yeah. I don't know if it's going to be capped in already at just like 256. Or no, if there they will said like one Nintendo, Nintendo said they can go up to two terabytes, even though two terabytes. They said like, although they're not in the market yet, once they will, Nintendo Switch will support it. <laughs> oh my well, God. A two, could you, a two terabyte micro SD card, dude. That's insane. That, the future. That's the future. But um, but now I, I said in the video, this, this lost footage that I have on my computer is... What I was talking about is like I didn't like I kind of compared it to the PS4 and Xbox One. A lot of people they don't really like. They, a lot of people don't have like the people who are complaining about storage. Like they don't really have a PS4 too. That that they don't. What I've noticed on the internet, um, when you have a PS4 and you get the disc, the actual disc, you insert it in. You gotta install it into the hard drive. That's like that. I don't. 
I don't. I still to this day, I don't really get it. Yes, they can. They can. They can make loading times faster, but not drastically as fast as cartridges. But anyways, we'll talk about cartridges in a bit. But with the Wii U, even they don't like. 30, it has thirty-two gigs um, on on the Wii U. You just put in the disc and it just plays. You don't got to do any installs. And I got I got a lot of Wii U games. I got as much games as I do at PS4, and I still have a ton of storage. I think I have like maybe. 28 gigs of storage because I don't the only thing that saves onto the Wii U itself is just save data and some download stuff Now I do know a lot of people still download games, which <laughs> I've said this a lot I I will never support digital games like I, I just don't I don't it I understand that it's cheaper for the developer But you know, I'm a collector, you know, I, I like the, the, the cases in my shelf That's just the only thing that's just that's for me. I can only speak for myself in this one I don't know about you, but I can speak for myself and about with um what and what, you know yeah okay but with uh cartridges not only are they cartridges are more advanced than they were like last generation man they have faster read write speeds than the blu-ray disc they hold more storage they like they're just overall but the load times are so much quicker like they, they did a comparison of like the breath of the wild on wii u and the switch uh load times the 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 Zelda load up, loaded up like in 13 seconds and it took on the switch and it took the Wii U version to load up like in 30 seconds There's a there's there's a big gap for the cartridges So like what I'm trying to say is that storage isn't a big issue And if you do if, you, if you're going physical, it's not gonna be a big issue like at all But if you are gonna be downloading stuff You know You know, it's the same thing like you're gonna just buy the SD card, you know, what I mean like as They're not they're not they're not expensive, but they're not super cheap. Like I think I saw a pretty good one, like 128 gigs, and it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. That's that's actually a really great deal. Yeah, yeah. And 100 and 128 can get you pretty far, especially how like um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sit here and like say Nintendo games are like super heavy, but I think Breath of the Wild is only like a 13 gig game. You know what I mean? And considering how big that game is, so a lot of games are not even going to take up that much space. As far Ugania. as it goes for me, yeah, um, go ahead. as far as the um, whole cartridge thing goes, I agree with that, right? Personally, mm. for me, coming from someone who loves like Nintendo 3DS, I yes, love having yes. cartridges. I mean, I mean, sure, you can run a risk of losing them if you're not like you know paying attention. But yeah, you but you also to have the worry about them like getting scratched or you know exactly. or any damage happening to them. You know, worst yeah, case exactly. scenario, your pin, some of the pins on a bag gets dirty. You could just yeah. rump that yeah. off with some um, alcohol. You know. You know all my cartridges from my childhood, my Super Nintendo cartridges, my Nintendo. I know, I, I know that's best before my time. I know people are gonna get mad, but I, they were hand me downs, so still want to throw that out there. But those things still work, and I've played. Like I remember the Yoshi story for Nintendo sixty four. I've had that since I was practically born, and it still works. And I have a bunch of GameCube and PS two and PS three games that are jacked up, and they won't work anymore because they just can't. Now, sure, I was a kid, and I was, you know. Like they get scratched easily, but the cartridges they truly do like stand the test of time. If that makes any sense, that do they do stand the test of time? <clears throat> they like, do. You, you can't go wrong with the cartridge, basically. The right? fact that you could find an NES game like and still play it perfectly, like it says a lot. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it tells like, you a lot about the they're thirty cards. years old now. You know, it's a great quality, great quality. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't have any other closing thoughts on the cartridges, I kind of want to move over to a uh, battery. The battery stuff. Oh, yeah. Let's get into that. Yeah. Um, this is, yeah, go ahead. This is my little spill on the battery thing, right? I, I've heard, and you can correct me wrong. Um, I heard it's like yeah. three to four, five or six hours without it yeah. being docked in around that time. Between, between two to five to six hours, depending on what game. Well, I think, Which makes sense. I think the battery option, I think that's good, you know, as far as like handouts and stuff. And you know the more the, the console the, goes on, they're gonna have peripherals that you the, know. The, yeah, the 3DS, the 3DS has the same battery life. So if you're good with the 3DS, you, then should, you should be, be fine with the Nintendo Switch. See, the thing is with the 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 Switch, everyone's really complaining about it. But it's like I don't I don't know where they exactly are coming from because now they're using USB Type C, and you can probably I I don't know if I don't think I have a couple, but you can probably buy one off the shelf at Best Buy. And I wish I had one. I I think one it's in my backpack, but I have a power bank. That holds um twenty what is it two thousand milliamps in there, and you just plug in the USB, and then you just plug it into my phone. Like it, so the battery isn't an issue, especially how um the switch is is gonna have a forty 
a 4300 milliamp battery life and you can get a 5000 milliamp power bank on amazon i think it was for 15 dollars 15 dollars so you can just if so it's not a problem you just stick so you can just so say i have my phone up the cat web say this is the power bank you stick it in your back pocket and just have the wire running around and just plug it into the console like i don't really know why everyone's really complaining like it's literally no issue like you can like literally double so let's say it is like zelda's gonna run three hours that's what they said zelda breath of the wild is gonna be three hours handheld so you run through the entire three hours and just plug it back in like so you get another six hours with if you have an extra power bank and the power banks are pretty cheap so i oh, literally oh, have wait, no I, I have this for a second though go ahead go as ahead. far as the power banks you know how they say like you dock it in it has more power what if you always have it to yeah. a constant power source do you think it will be able to tap into that actual overcall oh, just because it's like you oh have if it's that like power yeah bank? well the thing is performance yeah but not graphics because the the screen is still set on a 720p but i think performance wise like it will feel like load times go faster or just like uh, poly rendering is faster yeah i think if it's if it's plugged in it's gonna do things faster like you're gonna go through the menus faster everything's gonna be faster so that's i mean that's a plus right there i mean like it's it's not i have literally no issue at all all with the power and plus i'm not i was never really a handheld guy i had the game boy advance sp which I, I i still love the thing it's my favorite handheld like of all time like it plays all the game boy games but anyways um i never really played the handhelds like on an entire run like i do with the console i usually play it like in spurts like i do like an hour here i might go do something then i'll come back to it play it for like another 30 minutes and do that and that you know what i mean like i don't do a constant run and you got to remember, like, if you do put it on the dock, it's not only outputting the signal, but it's also charging it at the same at time. At the same time, yeah. So what you I'm should, thinking, like, yeah, go ahead. You should be, like, good either way. Like, as far as power goes, like, it's great. It's a win-win. The, you get, get all the potential and stuff on the go. Yeah, the way, that I'm, the way that I'm looking at it is, like, my, let's say I have the Switch. My typical day is going to be like this, man. I, I play during the day. And during the night, it's going to be in the dock. Like, because I usually... It's going to be in the dock of the way because I'm playing it through my TV. And then in the morning, let's say I got to go to school and I want to bring it. I'm going to go out with a couple of buddies. I'm going to do something. It's already been charging throughout the night because it's been docked. So, it's not like... Um, like with the 3DS, with the 3DS, I can understand because you know you got to manually plug in the wire. It's a little more, I want to say it's more complicated, but it's not as seamless as it is. It's like just simply putting it in the dock. And, it's, and yeah. yeah, and it's going to be like it, my Switch is going to be in the dock for like, oh god, that sounded really bad. <laughs> I got to apologize. God damn. My Nintendo Switch is going to be in the, in the dock like 80% of the time. So I got no problem. Like the battery is like zero issue at all with the battery life. Not to mention, um, as peripherals come out, I remember with the Wii U gamepad, they made bigger batteries. Uh, yeah, I hate so the gamepad. You game can like, probably swap out the battery inside the Switch and make expand the battery even more. I no, you know what? I think they actually came out and said it's not. It's going to be a non-removable battery. Wow. Oh. So I, I, you can count that as a minus, but at the same time, like you can just carry on a power bank. And you got to keep in mind, like, um, let's say you're playing like cause Zelda is such a big open world, you expect a pretty low end battery life. But if you're playing like I don't know, like NBA or like a, a indie game, like you can probably get maybe like more battery because they're not like, like they're not yeah, as demanding on the, yeah, demanding they're not as demanding, like especially with like Zelda, like because I'm saying Zelda a lot because that's the only game they really truly like, they t you gave us the numbers for battery life, but it's got to do um, the draw distance because it's such an open world. So I understand that. And even uh, three hours on Zelda Breath of the Wild, man, that's, that's God that's damn, crazy. I can't complain. Yeah. I can't complain. I really have no issue with that. I, I can't even find an issue with it. Like, I I don't get it. And plus, like, I guess one person can have, like, an issue, like, if they're on a plane or if they're, like, on a train that takes more than three hours, bring a power, the power it, bank. Though, yeah. Or, yeah, or, I, I've, I've personally never been on a plane, but, I mean, like I said, there's, there are outlets there, and I, like I said, you can just buy a $15, 5,000 milliamp battery uh, power bank that will fully charge it again. Like... I, I think we've beaten the, the battery topic to death, so... I mean, unless you got some fun with Marks, we should probably switch over to the... I mean, oh, no pun, in, no pun intended, we should switch over to the next topic. I mean, overall, though, the battery life should be a better, like, improvement over what the gamepad for the Nintendo Wii U can do. This is uh, Did I mention great. I hate the gamepad? It should... I hate the gamepad. <laughs> 
It's such a terrible. What was Nintendo thinking, man? I'm a diehard Nintendo fan, but I gotta call it what it is, man. The gamepad was terrible, and I think that's a, that's the only reason why. The, not the only reason, but a big reason why the Wii U flopped. Like I said, if they if they drop there early on and put the Pro Controller, they can drop the price like by fifty bucks. So it'll be what two fifty. Two fifty is a more it's it's a more a compelling uh, yeah, price than three hundred. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you're seeing a different number in the beginning. That's like it's. You know, they did studies, like, if you... That's why companies do two ninety nine ninety nine Because if it was three hundred ninety nine, you know... Supposedly, they did studies, like... But I don't, I, I'm not going to go into that, but... This isn't a Wii U rant video. <laughs> I got to leave it out there. I got to leave it out there. But, you know, speaking of that, you know, we were going to talk about price next. As far as price. it goes. As far I think as we the really, overall just jump. I think we already touched on it. Like I said, uh, I'm not... I'm not at all, I'm not mad anymore. I'm actually excited about the price. 300 bucks. I mean, last time I, like, during the presentation, I actually thought I was broke. But I'm like, damn, so I was tripping out too. But then I found out that I got 200 bucks aside already for the Switch. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm not really worried about it. Like, um, I got no issue with the price. The only, like I said, the issue I do have is, like, the accessories, which we'll talk about in the next video. And also the games, like, the one to Switch is 50 bucks. I don't know. I still think that should be a packet. Yeah, I still think that should be a, a pack in with it, but we'll talk about that in the next video. But overall, for the price itself, it's not bad. It's not uh, it's not as competitive, but it's not bad because you know the PS4 you can get a slim version of the PS4 with Uncharted 4 for like 250. But then you gotta keep in mind it is. I don't want to say it's older tech because like technically it still is more powerful than a Switch. But I gotta keep saying I gotta. Yeah, I gotta keep saying is that it's a home console and a handheld. So you're getting two and one. So you know, overall, I think, I think it's with the, the the price is reasonable. It's, it's, I it's think good. with the price, I it's really good, and I think the way that Nintendo can really like get a strong foot in is they they really got to market it. They're doing a pretty good job so far marketing, but the way they got to market, it, they really got to like they really need to get into people's heads that it's a uh, you can take the same game anywhere you want, and that's a pretty big like that's a pretty good like um. That's a great concept. Like, you can take any, like, because you can't do that with the PS4. And a lot of people nowadays, you know, like, especially the older gen, like, I'm still 16, you know, I'm still in high school, so it doesn't really apply to me. But a lot of the college students, like, that still game a lot, but they got other responsibilities. That's a pretty big incentive to get the same game, but you can play on the TV in, like, 1080p glory, but you can also take it wherever you want, and it's still HD. It's like, slight downscale but it's still hd and it's still a good screen so i think nintendo's really got a the price is good all they do is just got to market it as that they got to make sure that you can take the same game anywhere you want and i think that's how they can sell a lot of units more more, more than what they're already doing well one thing i would like to touch on moment like just briefly is the ui you know the it's UI, all about yes. the user interface so i don't know if Firstly, you've seen it but there's already been pictures of it yeah, what I think of it, yeah. it kind of reminds me of, like, in a sense, the 3DS's kind of UI. It reminds me just a little uh, bit of it. Kind of like the, a mixture the between the and a little bit of the Wii U. As far really? Because, like, honestly, like, I think... Honestly, I just hate the Wii, the Wii U UI. I, I don't like it at all. And when I saw the Switch, I was really happy because it's simplistic. It's nice. You just got the, the flat panels. Like, it reminds me more of a PS4 UI than it does than... Like the the Wii U and three uh, the 3DS like because the 3DS still uses like the kind of tiles kind of thing, but it's so sleek. It's so like it's very it's a very good looking UI. Granted, I think there should still like I think we'll talk about in the, in the, my problems because there's still some issues like with the online features which they should incorporate, but that includes the UI. But I'm a pretty so what I've seen so far, I like the Wii UI. It's simple. It, it looks clean. It's not cluttered like the Wii U because, you know, you have the two screens and you got the, the stupid Miis running around. Like, I don't want that. You know, I just want a nice UI as fast. The only that's the thing is with the Wii U, the UI was slow. Like, jumping in from the system settings and jumping out like from the main menu, that thing takes forever. I don't know if you've ever done that, but if you tap the settings thing, it opens up its own entire app. Not like the PS4 where it's like, it's like integrated to like its UI. So what I'm seeing so far looks good. I mean, I think the UI is pretty solid. Pretty solid. And this is just a little thing I want to throw in there. I hope they do, like, themes like they did with the 3 I just hope they throw it in there. Just as a yeah, little they will. They, they will. See, the thing is with, um, uh, in, in the present, in the Switch presentation, they have the white UI. But 
a developer that makes the these indie games i they, they tw- i think i retweeted it on twitter i don't know if you saw but they leaked the uh a uh, picture of, the, of a, uh, the ui and it was like black it had a black uh background so that's kind of open to speculation that we can have is it like some sort of night mode or is this, or we can actually change like the themes and stuff like that i think we will see some theme changing like that would be uh crazy. features they give you the feel of you know you actually more custom ability to it you know just add it, it. yeah exactly because a plain white is nice but at the same time you know a theme is a theme doesn't hurt you know so i think our last topic you know we're running a little bit out of time because i want to keep this pretty short but just the games um like i said i was a little bit underwhelmed during the presentation about the games they showed off but it's weird because um they had like this picture about all the year one games but they they have they didn't really put in a bunch of stuff that's already been confirmed like shovel knight's been confirmed uh yoki yoki lately like, a bunch of these games has been like fire emblem warriors you know but uh, the new fire like a lot of stuff has been confirmed but they haven't put it in like their presentation so that's why a lot of people are underwhelmed but i mean there's still a lot of games there's a lot of games coming out this year but there's a couple of solid ones so like i said we got zelda at launch which is you know a system seller you know that by itself you know what i mean seller. That's 100%. Um, I think a couple of weeks down the line, you're getting you're like, getting Mario. Wait, go ahead. I think they have like one, two switches and all that other is like launch shots and stuff like that as well. Yeah, but they're, they're, I'm not gonna lie, they launch just a little weak from what we're seeing so far. I think they like developed games, which right? developed. It was five games that they showed, but a couple. Like, I think like two more games have been announced like last week, like during the week. But I forgot what they're called, but um. But a couple weeks down the line, in April, you're getting um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, there's a lot of controversy with that game because they're charging a full $60. But for me, at least for me, it's a good deal because I haven't bought any of the DLCs for the Mario Kart 8. Me either. So I, exactly. So if you don't have any of the DLC for Mario Kart 8, it's a pretty good deal because not only are you getting all the DLC, which I think is like a, already like a, I want, I think it's the $30 value because it's like two DLC packs and I think they're each 15, but I could be, re- I could be wrong. I, I, I it's been a while. Yeah, I forgot. No, I, it's around but, the price. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, so it's already a third, an extra $30 value and then they're adding new content, like a better battle mode. So for me, from someone who hasn't bought the DLC on the original, it's a pretty solid deal. It's a pretty, because essentially you're just buying, you're paying like maybe 25 or 30 just for a Switch version that you can take on the go. It's not bad. It's not bad. They also have, you uh, know, Skyrim and all that. You can play that on the game. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about that. that, that. that. God cool. damn, bro. I'm so hyped about that. But I am. I'll talk about it because it's coming out later this year. So after that, in the summer, you're getting Splatoon. Now, I'm only listing off, like, the main title, like, the um, the big block, you know, like, the, the the big blockbuster games that sell well. You know what I mean? Like, the big games they got. So summer, they got Splatoon. And then I think... A little bit after that, they got the Xenoblade game, but I could be wrong. That's a Japanese think... exclusive, I think. I could be no, it's not. It's not. I don't, it's not. I don't think. No, it's not. It's not. Wait, is it? Because they had Xenoblade? like games that were Japanese exclusives too. Mm. I don't know. I don't think it is, but I haven't heard that it's, it is. But I don't know. It could be. I, but I, I still think it, it isn't. But even if it is, it's region free. But anyways, um. And then, of course, in the holiday, you got Mario Odyssey, which is a system seller again. And then you got, for, for me, uh, Skyrim, you know. My brother's been playing Skyrim, like, endlessly on the PS4, and, like, the game looks great, so I can't wait for it to come on Switch. Like, I wish it came out sooner, like, at launch, but I under- I understand, like, Skyrim can't be a launch game, because then it's got to compete with Zelda, so it's, you know, it's tough, you know what I mean, to try to compete with, you know, such a big game. But I understand that's going to be later down the road, but... I want to say that the games are scattered off pretty good. Like it's not all at launch where people want people wanted it to be all at launch, which is kind of dumb because they got to be scattered so that they have an even flow. You know what I mean? So that consoles can be selling evenly. It makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. So, but like yeah, I said, I I, I, I'm, I was I, I wasn't talking. Yeah, I wasn't talking about all the games. I was just telling like all the main ones. But do you got any final thoughts about the game lineup so far? Um. Launch titles, as far as, you know, how many are besides the other, lackluster. But as See, it this, goes on and progresses, I think it's it, it's going to have some pretty good yeah, games. They just yeah. really need to focus on their third party. If they can get third party, I, they'll be fine. Yeah, the third party is weird, but I think we'll talk about that in the next one because it's it's such like it's, it's a gray area. See, the thing is with that launch, although it does have like a little bit of games, but 
Zelda's a pretty big game. Like that can equate to maybe two or three, like sep- like other games. You know what I mean? I think Zelda is that type of game because people were saying they were asking like, can Zelda really like keep the Switch afloat during launch? And I really think it can. It, I think it can. And Zelda, it's been hyped up for like years now. I think it will help the Switch at launch. You got any final thoughts? Because I think okay. or I think we're ending it now. It's we're getting in there. So final thoughts. Like I said. I'm very so I'm I'm excited for the Switch. Like I said, I'm not gonna be able to get one at launch because they're sold out, but I will get one once they do restock. And like I said, we're gonna do another video talking about the concerns. We're gonna talk about the online accessory prices and like third party and stuff like that, and just general concerns what we have. But you got any closing thoughts? Uh, overall, it'd be pretty solid, pretty solid, uh, solid. Nintendo Switch. Yeah. I'm pretty still high for it. Sadly, yeah. I can't pr- get one, but uh, as soon as it it's comes and restocks, I'll get one. Yeah. You know. So, like I said, final marks. I'm gonna get one when it is. Um, I mean, I, I that's all I can say. You know, thank you guys for watching this video. Like I said, we're gonna have a separate video coming in talking about all the concerns. Two. Yeah. So I'll let you end off the video, and then I'll see you next time. All right, guys. Um, talk to y'all later. You know, I'm gonna have my dude over here, my man's Adam Gabber Studios, down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us what you think about the Nintendo Switch yourselves. Tell us if you were able to get a pre-order or if you weren't. Yeah. Tell us what games you're excited yeah. for. You know, just say something about the Nintendo Ex- Switch. Just let exactly. us know. Exactly. You know, Thank you, you know. guys for watching. Yeah, thanks for Thank watching, you. guys.